Hey guys, my name is Leon, and in this video we're going to talk about the 10 reasons why a VESC is better than a GT. If you've somehow stumbled upon my video, this is definitely not the first VESC video you've watched. So I'm going to skip over like the very obvious reasons that people tend to talk about when they're describing a VESC. And then I'm going to dive into the not so obvious reasons that, to me, th these are like very small things that you won't notice. But those are like kind of a big deal for me. The first obvious reason is definitely performance. There are basically three bottlenecks of performance in a one wheel. That's your battery, your controller, and your motor. So just by swapping the controller out with a VEST controller, you're going to see a performance increase, even if you're using the same battery pad. That's because when Future Motion designed the XR, it's supposed to be a mass market product. They set a lot of performance limits just to make the board last longer. Just by swapping your controller with a VEST controller, you're basically getting rid of that um, amp limit that your XR controller sets. So even when you're using a stock XR battery and a stock XR motor, hypercore motor, you're going to see a significant torque increase. Um, you're still probably gonna get the same top speed because like your your battery pack haven't really changed. But on low end, curb nudges, bonks, and climbing steep hills, these are really when you notice a lot of low end torque. If you go just one step up from a 63 volt to a 75 volt, which in my opinion is the best voltage for a one wheel, your VESC is going to have the equivalent range as a GT higher top speed than a GT and higher torque than a GT. So a 75 volt is going to like outperform any one wheel on the market. And if you want record breaking top speed and you don't care about range that much, then 84 volt is if you want to set like high speed records or like crazy steep hills, um, this is probably the battery for you. The second obvious reason is definitely repairability and modability. Once your board is broken, usually what happens is you need to ship your board to either a future motion or to stock life service and then they need to then wait for the part to arrive and then fix it and then ship the board back to you. So you're basically waiting for three shippings per board break. But if you use a VESC, if you know how to fix it, you're basically just waiting for the part to get to you and then you can just install it immediately. Admittedly, right now VESC is like super high in demand and parts usually take at least two weeks, usually a month to get to you. So you're not really saving a whole lot of time, but this will for sure get better in the future because as more players like join the VESC, VESC space, um, parts are gonna be more readily available and you're definitely going to get your board up and running a lot faster. And also Future Motion tends to like to place booby traps in their board to stop us from tinkering with it. For example, the reverse polarity battery, getting rid of a stock XR harness and a stock XR battery, BMS, um, the whole board just, I don't know, psychologically it feels better to ride because like when you're working on the board, it doesn't feel like the board is actively trying to kill you. It feels like the board is trying to cooperate, if that makes any sense. The third obvious reason is definitely the tuning aspect. You're getting like true custom shaping. If you haven't tuned a vest before, it might seem very straightforward. There's like three sliders that XR custom shaping. When riding a future motion one wheel, it's like, oh, this is how the board's supposed to ride. There's not much I can change about it. If you don't like how it rides, then good luck. Uh, get used to it. You can't really be like, oh, I, I don't like how this center feels. The center feels too rubber bandy. Let's change the eye term limit to be a lot more stiff. And then to compensate for that, let's uh, raise the Mahoney KP to make sure that the board still tilts when I'm accelerating. Like you can be a lot more critical with how the board ride. And it's like a different experience from riding a one wheel because you're able to critique how your board rides. And um, on top of just the, like the shaping itself, there's also other features. Uh, the most notable is obviously ATR, adaptive torque response. Basically it dynamically changes the tilt of the board to adapt to the terrain. Obviously you're able to go up super steep hills, but to me, what really matters is to be able to go down hills without tail dragging, which is like insane. Every time I'm doing trail riding, on all the hills that I normally would like tail drag all the way through on my GT, on my XR, I could just like lean back with my hand in my pocket and then go down that hill with like zero effort. When going up hills, obviously it raises the nose and all of this combined means that you can actually ride a lowered board on trails because, and then crank up the ATR so that you can get low center of gravity 
while not worrying about clearance. Also, turn tilt is amazing, and then how Vesca's tune, it's like almost as if you can balance on the edge of the tire. At first, this it's gonna feel super weird when you step on a vest, but as soon as you get used to it, you can basically do a 180 degree turn at the same space that you usually would do a revert. So you basically don't ever have to be doing reverts if you don't want to with turn tilt. There's also digital tilt kit so you can ride WTF rails level. And a lot of these software features that Future Motion just refused to build into the board, like sure start and one click posi are just part of the firmware. You don't have to worry about installing a short start kit or like soldering wires for posi. It's just like one click away. It's super clean, just all written as part of the program. The fourth very obvious reason to go with the VESC is that um, it's very compatible with the XR platform, which is objectively the best platform for a one wheel. XRs have been around for such a long time that all of the accessories are very much readily available. There are a ton of rails that's already been built. Band members has already been formed for the XR. There's a ton of foot pads and everything is in stock. You don't need to wait for limited drops. You don't need to wait for like shipping updates. Everything's available. And even some of the things, you can find them used or blend. Like the XR Kush Wide is like 50 bucks. The XR platform also has correctly placed bumper screw. Six screws per bumper. That is like the correct way to do bumpers. The GT, the front bumper, the slot in design is horrible. It always gets stuck. If it gets too dirty, you can't even drag the bumper out. Like if your front two screws gets worn down and stripped, your whole bumper just flaps around and it's just horrible. The XR bumpers, it's just objectively a better design. The XR also has really thin rails compared to the GT, and that makes for lower center of gravity and high clearance. This is something that no matter how you mod your GT, it can never be better than an XR. Also, having a 6-inch hub means it's compatible with a whole variety of different tires, including Growler tires. After the Enduro came out, I think a lot of people just like switched to Enduros. Even if you only ride Enduros, XR Enduro still feels better than GT Enduro. Also, a 6-inch hub, I think it unlocks more tricks. I'm able to bonk curves without hitting the rim, which I'm, I was not able to do on the GT. Okay, now we've covered all of the obvious features. I'm going to get to the not so obvious reasons why a Vesk is better than a GT. And the first one is the hypercharger is so much smaller. On the left is my Vesk 75.6 volt, six amp hypercharger. On the right is the GT 75.6 volt, six amp hypercharger. So these two chargers, the specs are exactly the same. And just look at how small the Vesk charger is. For the same space that I used to fit my GT hypercharger, I can fit a Vesk hypercharger a bonk block, and a bar of wax. The second not so obvious reason is the foot pad engagement is amazing. Aside from all the features in Short Start and Posi that you're able to get on a Future Motion one wheel if you mod it, there's even more foot pad features on a VESC that you cannot get unless you tap into your motor and your IMU data. You can customize your startup pitch tolerance. So I have my pitch tolerance at seven degrees, which means when you step on your one wheel, within seven degrees of level, it balances. This is really helpful if you like doing tricks, if you like jumping on the board, you don't have to be as precise as with your landing. There, there are more features such as a plus 10 degrees activation pitch tolerance within one second of disengagement. This means that when you're doing a body burial and if you land like nose down or tail down, it's really forgiving and the board will always activate. Also, you can customize your holding current. So I have my holding current at like two amps on the street, so I can do really long ghost rides. And on trails, I have my holding current super high so that if I bail on the board, the board doesn't like completely ghost ride down the hill. The third not so obvious reason, and this is a big deal for me, is to be able to turn on the board in any orientation. On a future motion one wheel, if you turn the board on when it's not flat on the ground, it will flash yellow lights at you. And for me, I like to turn my board on when I'm holding it upright and then throw the board on the ground and jump on it. I don't know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but like it's really quite the quality of life feature for me. The fourth not so obvious reason for vesking your board is just the experience of building a vesk. Every time I'm tuning my vesk, I'm always jumping back and forth between my vesk and my GT. It's quite revealing to reveal your problems with your tuning if you're riding a perfect board. And in my opinion, the GT tune is like really, really good. Every time I jump on my GT, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so stable. And then I go back to my back and be like, mm, this could be better. How, how do we make it better? Okay, let's tune this, let's tune that, let's make it as good as a GT. In, in many ways, 
it makes you appreciate how good a one wheel is. After your software and your hardware are all dialed, the next really fun thing and exciting thing is to be able to certify your own board. Even if you use the same component as someone else, everything is soldered differently and all the connectors are placed differently. So you have to be able to certify your own board yourself. The first ride always reveals problems. There's one time where as soon as the duty cycle goes over like 60%, the board starts to shake. Imagine going like 18 miles an hour and then just the board starts shaking and then you're like, holy shit, I gotta tune this. This is not tuned correctly. Sometimes you like, do a curb drop, be like, okay, this feels, the board's still intact, let's try a bigger curve, and then it, you drop and the board shuts off, or like the cable gland comes loose. All of these problems will be revealed on your first day of riding, so the experience of certifying your own board, kind of, you're kind of like a test pilot. It's not like if I unbox a GT from Future Motion, I can jump on it, go 20 miles an hour, and I know it will hold up. It's not like that. Be able to certify your own board, also means that you're learning to trust your own board, trust your own workmanship. Every time you solder something on your vest, you know that you're going to be depending your life on this solder joint to hold up. So all of these are quite the learning experience. The fifth not so obvious reason is a vest never gets old. There are always software updates. There are always hardware, new hardware to be installed on your vest. Float package, for example, is kind of like a software package within your VESC firmware that's responsible for all of your uh, one wheel specific tunes. And Nico writes the code for a flow package and he's doing such an amazing job guys. Every month there are major software updates for new features, bug fixes, UI improvements, help text updates, like all of these we're getting every single month. Compare this to a GT's, we got it for a year, we got one software update. I know for myself at least, sometimes I'm not able to keep up with all of the software updates, which like it seems weird because like everyone's like always super excited for updates. Flow package is getting updates so frequently that I'm like, I'm updating every other firmware update. It's cool, it's really cool to say that we're getting updates so frequently that we can't even keep up with it. Once you're like used to how your board rides, you can also try out other people's tuning cards. In flow package, either 1.0 or 1.1, we got the feature to be able to try out other people's tune cards that are already built into the VEST tool. Like you can just press a button and then you're trying Vestman's tune, you're trying Nico's tune. It's almost as if you're writing a completely different board. Aside from all the software updates, we're also getting a ton of new hardware. There are new BMSs being manufactured by ZBMS, Pickle BMS, um, Enoise coming out with BMS. There are also controller boxes from Unbox to Floatbox. There are new ESCs coming out. There are new motors coming out from the Fungineer, new headlights coming out from the Fungineer. All of these really cool hardware is a new life cycle for the XR. The seventh not so obvious feature is you're able to participate in the movement to further the sport of one wheeling. You're able to crush hills that nobody else can. Last time on a really, really steep descent, my friend hit like a drop midway through and it was easy. It was easy on my GT on that hill. I'm just worried about not dying. But on a vest, I can just like have my hand in the pocket and crush super steep hills or go up super steep ascents. And also you get to support the community of small businesses and individuals that are all making this vest thing happen. This will not happen without the community. So people like Nico, Dado, um, Vestman, Makers PEV, Spintend, Fungineers, Floatbox, Elmbox, all of these companies, plus many other, are all making this Vex, Vesk thing happen. And it's really cool to be supporting these companies that are furthering our sports, that are innovating, that are putting out products that they love. And I think this whole Vesk thing sort of happened when the GT launched. GT launched, it's a great board. A lot of people are super happy with the GT. As per my previous video, the GT is great, but it's not the board that I want. Instead of loudly complaining to Future Motion that this is not the board that you like to ride, you get to put all of that negative energy to a more productive side. Like actually go out and build your dream board from the hardware, every single from every single component of the hardware, which ESC are you using, which motor are you using, which BMS are you using, which battery you're using, which bolts are holding all of this in place. To the software side, the tuning side, you got to write your own shaping, you got to decide how exactly how your board rides, and you get to bring all of that together, and that is your dream build. That, and that's really why when I have a chance to ride a one wheel, I always pick up my vest. It's a personal item. It's exactly dialed to the way that I like.
And if all of this sounds appealing to you, then you're probably going to want to build a vest. And the next video is going to talk about what we believe as like the best way to convert your XR into a vest, especially for beginners. So that's it for this video. See you next time. Bye.